Hey, my YouTube friends, Travis here. Last week in the stock market was definitely a disaster for these chip makers and this like AI concept stocks, which have been superstars for the last couple of months in the stock market. Is it still legit to hold these like AI stocks, these chip makers or chip designer stocks? So in this video, we're gonna need to look at AMDs, Nvidia, Qualcomm, and ARMS, Q2 earnings, and financial results, and try to figure out was that a temporary thing, the last week's crash of these stocks, or was that the end of these chip makers, these AI stocks rally? Let's all find that out in this video. AMD mainly have four business segments. It's data center segment, which had record revenue of 2.8 billion, which was up by 115% year over year, primarily driven by the steep ramp of AMD's instinct GPU shipments and strong growth in the fourth gen AMD Epic CPU sales. Revenue increased by 21%, sequentially primarily driven by the strong ramp of AMD instinct GPU shipments. This is great, and this is the main driver for the financial results of Q2 of AMD. And that's that's a good sign because this part has the highest margin and it has the highest potential. And the second business segment is its client segment, and, that, and the revenue was $1.5 billion. That's also great, up 49% year over year, and 9% sequentially primarily driven by the sales of AMD's new Ryzen processor, AMD's Ryzen processors. And the third segment is gaming segment. The revenue was $648 million. That's down by about 59% year over year and 30% sequentially. That's a pretty big, big drop. And the main reason is due to a decrease in semi custom revenue, which means AMD's latest the consumer or gamers video cards, the graphic cards are not as attractive as what NVIDIA has to offer. The fourth segment is the embedded segment. Revenue was 861 million. That's down 41% year over year. Uh, again, a pretty dramatic down year over year as customers continue to normalize their inventory levels. Revenue increased 2% sequentially. That's better than last quarter, but if, if you compare that year over year, that's a pretty dramatic and significant drop. If you look at the quarterly financial results table, the gross margin and re the revenue was $5.8 billion and gross margin was $2.8 billion. Uh, the net income is $265 million. That's not a very that's not a very good number comparatively. But if we look at the non-GAP quarterly financial results, the net income was $1.1 billion. That's that's a much better number, which means the number in the GAP quarterly financial results these like operation expenses that brings down the net income is like a one-time thing. It's a temporary thing, which if you if you have a pretty good reason for that in the non-GAP quality financial results, you can kind of exclude that or normalize that number and make the net income more realistically reflect the actual financial status of AMD, which is much better than the $265 million. And if we look at the highlights of the up upcoming months or years of AMD, it has a pretty good plan. And the map, the roadmap of AMD seems more promising, much more promising than Intel. I'm not jealous of Intel situation right now compared to AMD, even Qualcomm, not to mention Nvidia. Decades ago, Nvidia was like a fanboy to Intel. They had, they tried so hard. They even think about like acquiring VI8. Back then it was like a, a CPU maker that has the patent of x86 that can somehow get Nvidia into this market. Look at all the way it goes now. It's not like only software companies can be trillion dollar companies. Look at Nvidia and even AMD. But yeah, the AS300 series is a big step forward for AMD to get into this territory. And there are a few other plans in the roadmap for AMD, pretty solid Q2 and Q4 plans. Move to the business outlook. For the third quarter of 2024, AMD expects revenue to be approximately $6.7 billion, plus or minus $300 million. That's a pretty significant bump compared with the Q2, and that's a pretty decent outlook for AMD, which is good for, for the company and for the stock. At the midpoint of the revenue range, this represents year-over-year -year growth of approximately 16% and sequential growth of approximately 15%. Non-GAP gross margin is expected to be approximately 53.5%. This is a pretty promising outlook. If we look at AMD's current stock price, sitting at around $130, compared to its six-month high of 213, it's down by 40%. Its PE ratio is high, sitting at 100, almost 160. But if we consider the non-GAP revenue and time step four, that compared with the market capital, that's down to about 40, which is a reasonable, very reasonable P ratio considering the market AMD is in and the non-replaceable place. I think AMD is the only company in the planet that can contest the position of NVIDIA in terms of GPU performance and the whole like AI computation world hardware-wise. 
Given the unique position and the pretty decent outlook of AMD's next quarter financial performance, and considering the current stock price, I think to me, AMD is still a pretty decent hold. I'm currently down by almost 15%, but with all the analysis and reviewing, I'm gonna hold on to the shares for the next few months for my midterm trading in this portfolio. Okay, NVIDIA. NVIDIA is yet to report its Q2 earnings. It's gonna be announced in August 28th, 2024. And what I wanna show you guys is last quarter, NVIDIA got net income of almost $15 billion. At the scale of NVIDIA, there's not a lot of companies in the planet that can actually be a comparison, but Microsoft is definitely ahead and one of that. Microsoft had net, net income of $22 billion in the same quarter. Microsoft is currently sitting at a $3 trillion market capital versus 2.5 of NVIDIA. If you look at the ratio, well, given the stronger growth and the fast, faster growing rate of NVIDIA's uh, net income and its revenue, I think it is fair that NVIDIA is sitting at a market capital at $2.5 trillion at, as of right now. But NVIDIA definitely needs strong Q3 earnings and strong Q4 guidance to stay ahead and stay sitting at such a high market capital and market valuation. Here is a very interesting news for NVIDIA and the good news for NVIDIA is that Plossy buys NVIDIA sells Microsoft. According to a new disclosure form, Plossy purchased 10,000 shares of NVIDIA on July 26, ahead of the Q2 earnings. And that's kind of some kind of like buy the dip actions. If you say this, the second most powerful woman in the United States buys NVIDIA doesn't have any signal to anything, I wouldn't believe that. Not to say she has some inside information, but definitely it's fair to predict that NVIDIA is going to report a very strong Q2 earnings. And it's logical to think NVIDIA is gonna have a pretty decent Q3 outlook, business outlook for its upcoming earnings. However, one worrying news for NVIDIA is that it's reported that NVIDIA's Blackwell GPUs, which are currently the most powerful GPUs, NVIDIA planned, allegedly delayed due to design flaws. That's a pretty serious problem, and the launch expected to be pushed back by three months or more. So according to this news, sources from both NVIDIA and Microsoft reportedly confirmed that NVIDIA is delaying its upcoming Blackwell AI GPUs from the expected fourth quarter launch to potentially the first quarter of 2025. This is bad, but NVIDIA's lead in this field is tremendous. It's not like delaying three months can get any competitors any chance to catch up very soon, but still this is a very disturbing and red flag for NVIDIA. So all in all, hold, hold for AMD and NVIDIA for me in the trading portfolio, which I have full transparency with you guys. And also Qualcomm posted a pretty decent Q2 earnings report and have pretty decent Q3 outlooks. It's just that the Brock market sell off last week kind of dragged the performance of these stocks even more, even further down. I don't think I can cover all the content of ARMS and Qualcomm's in terms of this business models, their, their segments of business and the deeper analysis to their earnings report. I'm gonna cover those content in my next videos. If you like to take the same journey with me or if you like to keep an eye on the performance of my trading portfolio, my trading account, Please like this video and consider to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one.